lucky to be at the Natural History Museum in Los Angeles interviewing Maureen Walsh, a paleontologist at the museum. So let's take a look. My name is Maureen Walsh. I am the Assistant Collections Manager for the Dinosaur Institute at the Natural History Museum in Los Angeles. So when did you realize that you wanted to become a paleontologist? As a child, in high school, in college? Um, I think I always had an interest for treasure hunting. Um, maybe not so much a paleontologist. I don't think I narrowed it down that much. I really loved archaeology and that really led me into paleo. I started as a volunteer. Um, but it was, it was a long process. I can't say one day I woke up and said I want to be a paleontologist. It's, it's been a 30-year journey. Um, so here's another question that I know many young explorers and science lovers uh, would like to hear answered. How does one become a paleontologist? Okay. Um, well, first thing, the most important thing is to take your, I think, your natural talents into, if you enjoy dinosaurs and working with uh, natural history collections, then you should take your natural um, talents. Like if you like to draw, then you can always go into paleontology um, from an artist's perspective. Mm -hmm. um, if you um, have talents like sculpting, then you can always uh, do fleshing out of dinosaurs, you know, with the scientific research, like Stephanie does, our illustrator. Um, but you really need a great foundation in biology, um, geology, math, and if you really are good in math, then that's really helpful because geology and paleontology really um, is physics in terms of rocks. It's the movement of rocks, the pressure of rocks, uh, preservation of fossils is all related to the rocks they're in. So if if you can concentrate on geology and math and physics and biology, then you're great. And if you can uh, do what you like and bring um, what you really enjoy doing as a hobby into your work, mm -hmm. then you've you've won the game. Because if you enjoy what you're doing, you don't ever work a day in your life, <laughs> and that's your goal—not to work a day in your life. <laughs> Um, so what do you believe is the most interesting part of being a paleontologist? I think seeing new things that nobody's ever laid their eyes on before. Um, working with really top-notch paleontologists on research for me is the most important because I, I, I don't have a PhD so I don't have um, the academic background to pull it all together um, but I can um, act in a really great, strong, strong support um, position, uh, supporting research. So I find the, the thing I like the most is um, micro prep of Mesozoic birds. So I'm in a perfect niche here because uh, my boss is one of the world-renowned bird paleontologists. So you know, I just basically stumbled into this. So you can't really. But I always have loved birds, and I've always followed birds, so that is that part of um, the journey that I tell you, you should always um, follow what you like to do and incorporate what you really like to do into your work. And it usually leads you down the right place if you always follow your heart, you know, what you really enjoy. Do you enjoy field work, and how often do you Ooh. go on the field? Okay. Um, I enjoy field work, but um, field work comes in many different shapes and sizes. Field work can mean, um, you know, an hour hike um, and then eight hours of really serious hard labor breaking rocks. And um, so it comes with large groups of people and really heavy duty hard work. And then you can do field work where it's uh, you have four people and you're out prospecting and it's much more relaxed and you can walk and look for fossils. Um, a change occurs once you find a bone bed so it's no longer kind of a 
relaxing thing where you prospect and look for organic shapes in mm -hmm. the soil, it becomes a um, commando mission of getting the bones out of the ground, right? So, yeah. so, so now that we've answered what is the most interesting part of your job, what is the most boring part of being a paleontologist? Paperwork, filing, cataloging? Um, no, cataloging is actually fabulous. I <laughs> am an organizer at heart, so I love to organize stuff. Um, my house is the opposite <laughs> of my, my job, but that's weird, I know. Um, boring, I can't really say. Um, there's nothing boring about it. Um, the most boring, I, I, I wouldn't say there's anything boring about paleontology. It's all very exciting, and that's what makes the job so fantastic, is that every day, uh, you learn something new every day. You see new things. You um, you learn new things. Mm -hmm. So this this sort of leads us into the next question. Um, museums have accumulated hundreds of thousands of specimens um, throughout the years, and more than anyone could analyze in a lifetime. So how how do you balance the time spent in the field searching for new specimens with the fact that there are so many already in the museum waiting to be analyzed? Okay, this is a great question. Um, you balance the time spent in the field by trying to teach your um, field crew or your students or whoever you're working with what's important to pick up. You don't, you have to be very critical of what fossils you bring to the museum because you have to accession them and it requires, it's very time consuming, right? You have to accession them, you have to ID them, you have to give them specimen numbers, you have to prepare them to a point, um, then you have to store them, which is, um, gets into the whole expense of keeping them because every single inch in that room, in those cabinets costs money. It's like rent, right? So you don't want to bring back a bunch of fragmentary stuff that has no meaning. Oh. To balance the time spent is really to uh, place priorities on what you're doing. You go in and you take a quick overview of what you're working on and you determine uh, through experience um, what you're going to get the most bang for your buck out of. So, for pictures, you want the, the whole specimen to look good. You don't want to work just on the skull and have it look beautiful, and then the rest of the body still be kind of funky. So for photographs, you want to do a quick overall cleanup. For research specimens, depending on what you're researching, you, um, you're very much directed at a particular diagnostic elements, because Luis doesn't need to see um, the beautiful, even though, you know, it's important, uh, beautiful femur that's perfectly um, preserved if he is trying to identify these birds based on their sternum, right? So I would take that bird, and if it was a research specimen, the femur's not important, the sternum's important. So you go and you focus on, on how quickly you can provide him that information. So for research, you really need to know what your researcher is looking for so that you don't waste time preparing things that don't tell him anything. So you learn as you work on particular specimens what's diagnostic. Like big long neck sauropods, their, their vertebra are diagnostic. So you wouldn't be working on his leg. You know, you learn uh, depending on who is researching it, what bones tell them the most and allow them to maybe separate it from another um, you know, member of the same group. So maybe you can get yourself a new species. So it all depends on why you're prepping it and what your outcome is. And for a preparator, or to start at the beginning, you really want to know where you're trying to get before you ever start. It's like the question I used to ask my, um, the guys I worked for was, what do you want in the, at the end? So I know that some of the kids who visit my website would really be interested in a career in paleontology. So how difficult is it to find a job in this field? So how competitive was it to get your job? Uh, it's very competitive. So it's, it's always great to do you know, your best in school because you are competing with um, partially insane people. 
<laughs> who uh, love rocks and just, you know, if you love what you do and people that usually are in paleontology love what they do, so we're all kind of, we have our quirks. Um, but I started in this field as a volunteer. Uh, I think that's a good way to get in because, um, first of all, you meet people who are working in the field. You, um, uh, you kind of, you get exposure from the ground up. Like I, when I started, I worked on invertebrates. Um, for about five years, I worked on invertebrates. I cleaned oyster shells, pectin shells, uh, turritella, those are the long twirly ones, um, all kinds of bivalves. Once in a while, a shark's tooth. Once in a while, a bone. It'd be great, because you, you know, when you high grade, um, invertebrates you can go through truckloads but you every everything you do when you start at the bottom like that builds it's like math invertebrates really tell you about your environment they tell you about the health of your environment they tell you about the weather you know um, they tell you a lot so it's important to come in at the bottom and learn about invertebrate paleontology and then move you know to vertebrates that was the way I did it um, but I basically started as a volunteer because I wanted to get out of the house. <laughs> and I was so uh, impressed by the caliber of people that I was working with that I just, uh, it was just a wonderful place to be. Uh, but it's tough, so you got to get a good education. And, and if you can, get an um, advanced degree if you want to do research. Not necessary, but it's very helpful. So, um, lastly, but also most importantly, mm. what advice would you give to teenagers who want to become paleontologists? Volunteer. Volunteer, volunteer, volunteer. It's like location, location, location. When you're buying a house, you have to be here to get the job. Because if you're here and you're volunteering and and the people that you work with know how you work, they can see the job you do, they know that you're passionate about it, and then there's a job that opens up, and by goodness, you're there. So if you're there, you have a lot more chance of getting in than if you're not there. And if they know you and know you love it, and they, it's all about proving yourself and getting your foot in the door with this with this because there are many very famous, very successful paleontologists that do not have PhDs. Um, they just have a, a, a great love of natural history. And it shows when you volunteer because you give your time for free. And most people nowadays don't do that unless they really love what they do. Well, thank you for your time. Um, I know you're busy, but this means a lot to me. I'm very thankful and lucky to be here. Oh, well, it is my pleasure to give you this interview, and I like to pass on the knowledge and, uh, to younger people because I've learned a lot in this journey about you know, following what's important, following your dreams. Um, you can do anything you want. You just have to keep working at it.